highest, greatest deal that he can get together for you. He's going to, whatever that thing is, y'all, I know none of you nice, Christian, wholesome women ever had this happen to y'all. But for me, I'm talking about me. Whenever I get really angry at my husband, the finest man I have ever seen in my entire life. What's your name? You, your skin's so pretty. Your hair so nice. Oh, why? Because the enemy is saying, see, if you, if you would, then you wouldn't have to be dealing with this over here. That's what Satan was telling Daniel. If you compromise over here, then you won't have to deal with what's going on over here. But unfortunately, what he always leaves out is he never tells us the repercussions of the compromise. Miss, Miss um, Vicki is always talking about Sister Eve. Sister Eve didn't realize the consequences for her compromise. I'm just going to try it, see if it works out, you know. I'm, I'm going to eat the, vet, the fruit and see what happens. And that one compromise condemned all of mankind. Amen. What compromises in your life has Satan brought to you in disguise so that you could choose the king's dainties? without telling you the compromise of that choice. Whether it's the form of that job you always wanted, that car you always wanted, that man you always wanted. I'm still looking for a house, but y'all the house prices is crazy right now. So the house that you always wanted or something as simple as the recognition that you have always wanted. What has the enemy brought in your path to say if you will just compromise this one thing, this thing over here will be a, a non-existent issue. Isn't that what he did to Jesus? If you will just jump off this cliff, Prove that God will bring down the angels to save you. And how did Jesus respond? He quoted scripture back to him. Amen. I'm not supposed to test God. God says, don't test me. When he says, I'll give you, you know, that's a bold brother going to offer Jesus something that he already owns. You know, that, that's, that's pretty bold. But he did it. Offering Jesus things that he already has. Amen. What happens to us when the enemy starts to offer us things that we already own? The word says this is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh. Joy, yeah. peace, um, contentment, overcoming, victory, releasing of strongholds, power, anointing. All of those things are things that I inherited when I became a Christian. How are you going to offer me stuff that I already own? It was bought and paid for just for me. How are you going to offer me my own stuff? And how am I going to give up things that I've already paid for? Why would I do that? You say to yourself, oh, Sister Shell, I ain't giving up nothing. I, I'm, you know, I ain't gave up nothing, nothing, nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. You give up your joy when you let folks drive you crazy. You give up your peace when you let life tell you what you can't do, where you can't go, what you can't be. You give up your hope when you feel like that this is it for you, that this is, this is what God has for you and you can't never get no better. You give up your victory when you allow people to define who you are rather than listening to God who said, I am wonderfully made, right? He said, he knows how many hairs I have on my head. My husband and I have been together over 30 years, and I bet you that brother can't tell me how many hairs I got on my head. 
but Jesus can. So when we are looking at this whole concept of spiritual warfare, it's not, I just have to have enough strength for the battle I'm in. It's saying to myself, I am going to make the decision before I get to the battle, where I stand, whose side of the fence am I on, that I'm not going to compromise, no matter how much of the king's dainties the enemy puts in my path. I have to decide that prior to suiting up in my armor, prior to getting in the fight, prior to the battle. We look at the Ukraine. I've, I've been joking with people that Christians need to be Ukraine. When they saw Russia, they said, oh, wait a minute, this fool talking about he wants to invade. He was just talking. And the Ukraine said, well, we got to get ready. He talking about invading us. We, we got to get ready. Old people, young people, in between people started getting ready for battle. They didn't wait for the Russians to get there and then start getting ready. They started getting ready before they even put the first boot on their soil. They started getting ready. That's what we see Daniel doing. Daniel and his boys started getting ready for battle way before the Babylonians took them into captivity. Amen. So what battles are you not prepared for because you didn't start getting ready prior to you getting there. I need you guys to start talking to me. What have we learned? We, we've covered two of the first chapters of spiritual warfare. What have we learned from these, these studies? What have we learned about spiritual warfare? Being able to recognize when you are in warfare and being more proactive rather than reactive is going to win the battle. I like that. Proactive rather than reactive. Yes, ma'am. That goes yes. along with making sure you dress properly for the battle. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. All your accoutrements. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> The war is in heaven, and we all, it's inevitable, we're all going through it to the day we die. Yes. The war is in heaven. The war is, is, that was in heaven was when Satan was thrown down to earth. But yeah. the war Amen. that's happening now, mm -hmm. he has declared war on God's people, and God's people happen to be here on earth. And so Amen. that's where the war is being fought now. And so we want to remember that there is no person. You know, sometimes we're so fixated on that Christians are going through personal warfare. And we do. But so do non-Christians. They just don't know it. The non-Christian goes through spiritual warfare because the enemy tries to keep them from hearing the word from accepting the word, from growing in the word, from accepting Jesus in their heart. He keeps them blinded. And um, I love it when Letitia said the last time we met, I'm so, I want to say it the way she said it. She said, sometimes people are, are worried about missing out. They're worried about, I'm going to miss out. That's the enemy telling us that, telling us that if I follow God, I'm going to miss out on this over here, or, or I'm not going to be... It's always funny to me when I hear people say, well, I can't have no fun if I become a Christian. That's because they've never been around Christians. We're crazy. You ever see a whole bunch of Christians in one area? We loud, we laughing, we're acting crazy because we're, we're enjoying each other. We're fellowshipping with each other. You can tell when church folks get together, we're the loudest people in the room. Just having a good time with each other. I went to see um, Yinka. I was late. Yinka, I'm sorry. But I went there to see her at this place, this, this um, I can't think of the name of it, but it's for this African missionary organization. And I walked in and I, I told my brother and my sister was with me. 
And I told them, I said, well, you know, I don't know how this is going to go because sometimes, you know, how folks just can be. Well, who is this coming in here? I don't know these people. I don't know. Right. I've been to some churches to speak and I'm like, is this a church? They acting like this with folks? Oh, my goodness. So reserved and offset from the moment I walked through the door. I, it was like I was with family. I, it was like, oh, hi, you know, come, come on in. And that's the way Christians are supposed to be with each other. I, you're, I'm not missing out on anything because I'm a Christian. Especially when I get my, my sister Vidya, where is she? I can't see her. She's not on, online right now. Well, there she, she is. is. There she is. Now, me and Vadia act crazy the whole time we have in Bible study. We, I keep telling her she's a, my, my sister from another mother. We got the same outlook on life, the same temperament. That's my sister. Daniel and his boys were brothers. They may not have been born from the same person, but they were brothers. And what united them is because they are going through the same struggle. The struggle might look differently because as we read through Daniel's history, we will see that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they go this way and Daniel goes this way, but they're both in spiritual warfare throughout, even though that warfare took on different, different disguises, it still was warfare. Mm -hmm. They still were both going through it. Some of you are going through stuff, just all kinds of stuff in your life. And Satan wants to make us think when we're in the heat of battle, it's just us. We're going through this. It's just us going through it. It's just me. Nobody else in the whole wide world is going through this but me. Why, Lord Jesus, is it always me? Why is it that I can never get ahead? Why is it that all these people that's living their life like hellions prosper and I'm trying to do things the right way and I just cannot get ahead? Why, 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 why? That's the way Satan wants us to think. That we're Michelle, by ourselves. Please go ahead. I was just thinking the conversation you and I had, um, I think it was last week. Mm -hmm. When we were talking about how the enemy is trying to make people accept the gay lifestyle and lesbianism and the pronouns. And as a school counselor, it makes me feel some kind of way when I have students that are professing to have crushes on same sex. Mm -hmm. And I, I wonder if and when I watch commercials and I see those kind of people kissing and that kind of thing, I don't know if to determine that as being a, a spiritual warfare battle that, cause it really bothers my inner soul when these things happen. And I, as a public school counselor cannot profess my um, heart in the situation. I have to walk around it because of fear of losing my job? Or is it just the end times that I'm struggling with? Because in the word, it says that things like this are going to transpire and it's happening obviously because that's what God's word says is going to happen. And so I just can't decipher whether or not I'm in a spiritual warfare battle with this or if this is just the end times that I have to accept and push through. Okay, that's three things. So let's start with the first one. Um, yes, you are in spiritual warfare. That's why your spirit is unsettled. Two, there are two types of spiritual warfare. There's a spiritual warfare on mankind. Well, actually three. Then there's spiritual warfare on God's people. And then there's spiritual warfare on you personally. That he has decided I'm going to rain down hell in your personal life, right? Now, the spiritual warfare that's on all of mankind is Satan saying, I'm mad because I got kicked out of heaven. I got my butt whooped by God. 
and his angels. So I'm just going to take it out on every living human being. Remember when we read that scripture in Revelations that said that he was waiting for the baby to be born so that he could come in and kill it? Remember when we read that in Revelations? That's what Amen. it's basically saying is that he is at war with all of mankind, whether you're saved or not saved. Okay, that's the first mm -hmm. thing. The second thing is he is in particularly, particularly at war with the Christian. Why? Because we have chosen to follow and honor and worship God, the very thing that he wanted. Remember, he wanted to be God. He didn't want to like, God, we're going to do this together, whatever. No, he wanted to take God's place. Amen. So now that's the second battle of him fighting against God's people. We also read that in Revelations where it showed that he was rained down on earth to cause war with, with um, all of mankind. But in particularly, it said that he was going after the people of God. Okay. Then the third warfare that we have is our personal warfare. And that warfare is tailored for each of us. So like Badi and I have problems with our temples, you know, that's just something we got to work on. So what does the enemy do? That's the way he comes to us. People doing just crazy, ridiculous things. And you got to sit there and say, Lord, please don't let me open up my mouth. Just keep my mouth shut. Help me not to. When I say lay hands, I'm not talking about to heal nobody. Okay. So help me not to lay hands on nobody. Michelle's laughing. Help me not to lay hands on nobody. Let me help me to just do what I'm supposed to do. Right. Well, he just uses the areas that we that we're weak in or that we yeah, struggle yes, with against us. Definitely. Um, Letitia, are you raising your hand or are you saying amen? I don't know which one. <laughs> I was raising my hand a Girl, couple of times. how many times <laughs> do I have to tell you? Just jump in and say what you got to say. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just going to say on the part that um, I can really understand what Michelle, um, if you look at the media, especially movies and uh, music and especially commercial, they have been sprinkling this acceptance of same sex, um, everything of trans this and they, them, him, her, whatever, of you can make a decision of who you want to be with your sexuality or who you want to be in general. And they're attacking our youth so they can bring up the next generation that way. If you look at all these movies, there's so many movies out with just kids making decisions about their lives, running the world, saving the world, all this stuff is geared towards our youth. Mm -hmm. And especially with the gay, because then that means that they can't <laughs> make more babies and it's an abomination of God, you know, like you said yes. in the beginning, that's what he, that's what he wants to do. And we have to make sure that no matter what we're doing, we're supposed to do as Christians, period, through all of that. Um, so. Yes, yes, and double yes. One of the things... Somebody's got on a TV. I can hear it. Do you want me? Okay, thank you. Um, one of the things that we, that I tell parents that I talk to, Satan has no problem talking to our children about anything that they are willing to listen to. It's, Amen. Us. it's us that have issues with talking to them. We have to be just as strategic just as bold, just as outspoken. You know, you guys laugh at me because I say just the darnest things and y'all laughing and all this. And sometimes it's because the church has gotten so lax at speaking truth. They try to say things that's politically correct. They want to make sure that they don't offend anybody. They want to make sure that if I, if I say this, you know, I want everybody to feel included. I don't want everybody to feel included. I want everybody They don't want to lose members. Yes, that's, that's exactly that it. Is. They don't yeah. want to lose members. And if I lose members, I'm going to lose my tithing. So yeah, going to lose I, that I income that comes that. in. Remember that compromise we was talking about earlier. That means that I am choosing man over God. There is no way around it. 
That is what's happening. So with our youth, we have to be bold, baby. Yeah, sex feels good. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's nice, especially if you got somebody to know what they're doing. But you gotta, you gotta say to them, listen. But if you hop into bed with every time Dick and Harry, that has repercussions. You need to know that. Our churches are not talking to our young people that way. Our churches are, are, are ignoring things. And guess who's the church? I'm not talking about the building. I'm not talking about First Baptist or Pentecostal or Apostolic or whoever. We are the church. We're the church. Mm -hmm. And when you see these babies losing their minds, you know what we do? Girl, her child is out of control. You wouldn't believe her. Oh, that couldn't be my child. I wouldn't. I couldn't believe, girl, her child doing this, her child doing that. Instead of saying, you know what, baby, give your baby my phone number. I need to talk to her for a little bit. Just tell her call me. Yeah. So call and that is what I was about to say. I'm so glad you said that. Mm -hmm. The deal is, and this is what I tell kids when I'm ministering to them. Homosexuality is no different than lying, cheating, stealing. It's just sin. It's just sin. So if you're committing adultery and I'm a homosexual, we both are sinning. So rather than condemning the person, you have got to say, baby, I, you know what? Yes, you were born that way. You were born exactly like you saying you are. You know how I know that? Because we was all born in sin. Mm -hmm. What you're doing mm -hmm. is so mm -hmm. I'm not going to dispute with you whether or not you was born gay. I agree with you. You were. I was born a liar. I was born a thief. I was born an adulterer because I was born in sin. The thing mm -hmm. is, we have yeah. to learn not to sin against God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Choices. So choices. When, when we are mm -hmm. talking, I love the fact that Latasha said, which is what I tell parents who come to me and say that their, their child has, as they say, come out. I can love, because that's what God does. God loves the person, but he rejects the sin. Mm -hmm. God says, Amen. I will never, ever agree with you in your sin. I love you to death. I will be there for you, but I will not condone your sin. And that's how you have to be as a Christian. When I'm talking about the church, I want to be clear. Yes, the building, the pastors in the building have issues sometimes, but we're the church. We mm -hmm. are the church. And if we are not expressing God's words to our circumference of people that's around us, that's our circumference of reach. Those people that are in your circle right? If I'm not speaking truth into their lives, then how are they supposed to know? How are they supposed to figure it out? If I'm more afraid, remember, Daniel had every right to be scared. This man can lose his life, right? Mm -hmm. So being afraid, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, God don't condemn people for being scared. I can be scared and speak God's truth. I can be scared that I'm going to lose this relationship forever. I can be scared that this person's going to get mad at me. I can be scared mm -hmm. that this person will never talk to me again. I can be scared that this person is going to cuss me out. I can even be scared that the person might jump on me. There is nothing wrong with being scared. Mm -hmm. God does not hold us accountable for being scared. He holds it's us our accountable. Choices. Yes, and he holds us accountable for not speaking truth when we're given the Amen. opportunity. That's Amen. what he holds us accountable for. Mm -hmm. So as we reflect on what we've already learned about spiritual warfare, we learn that I have to, like Michelle said, I have to know I'm in, I am in a battle. I can't fight if I don't know I'm in a fight, right? So I've got to first know I'm in a fight. I have to know the difference between being in spiritual warfare and spiritual consequences. Mm -hmm. Spiritual consequences is as a result of my poor choices. 
Amen. I blame Satan for that. That's my choice, right? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Spiritual Amen. warfare is what happens to me. Remember, Daniel and his spiritual brothers didn't do anything to warrant what was being thrust upon them, right? Amen. Amen. Okay. So that's spiritual warfare. The next thing that we had to learn, we learned way back in chapter what, two, I think it was, that we had to learn that the war ain't pretty. What does that mean? Is that a catchphrase? Is that just something that sounds kind of cute? What does it mean that war ain't pretty? It means that I've been in a fight before. I, I have had a fist-to-fist -fist combat with folks. You're going to get bloody. They, you might get your hair pulled because they used to love to pull my hair. They just love because, you know, wherever you pull your hair, that's where your hair go, right? You get knocked down, drug out. Some fights I won. Yeah. Some of them I lost, right? Get a black eye. Hey, black eyes. Scuffed mm -hmm. up marks, torn, torn clothes. If I get into spiritual warfare and there is nothing that I don't feel like I've been in a fight, did I really fight? Mm. Mm. Did I really give it all I could? Or did, you know, I just go, stop, just stop. Compromise. Stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, through compromise. Mm -hmm. Right? We learn that we have to be dressed for battle. If God speaks to me, now listen to me carefully here. If God speaks to me 99.9% .9 of the time through his word, and I'm only reading his word 10% of the time, how hmm. can I be equipped to fight? Yeah. Amen. How yeah. can I Amen. be equipped to, to have the right kind of armor? I don't even know how to properly pray. Yeah. Because the word tells me how to pray. I speak Amen. those words back to him. How do I know that? Because the word tells me, you told me that there was no weapon that is formed against me that will prosper. Amen. Oh, Lord, you see this one right here? I'm expecting you to fix that. You told me that this fool wasn't going to be able to prosper against me, Lord. So I'm coming yeah. to you with this. And you told me that you care about the stuff that I care about. You told me that if I bind it on earth, you're going to bind it in heaven. If Amen. Earth, Amen. That's Amen. what you told me. Yes. So I can yes. hold you accountable yes. to that. How can I Amen. know that if I don't yes. get his word? How hmm. can I know that if I don't spend any time in his word? I'm waiting for somebody to spoon feed me what God said. Hmm. We learn that when we're in warfare, we have to know our weapon. Who we are. We have to know, you know, listen, I like guns. I've been growing up around guns all my life. I've been shooting since I was a little bitty, teeny tiny little girl with my daddy. Okay. My sister, on the other hand, she hates guns. She's yes. petrified of them. Okay. Yes, I am. I am not going to be in a gunfight and hand her a gun. That's not going to happen. Because who <laughs> do you think is going to get shot with the gun? <laughs> It's either going to be me. Or... You do not have to do her like that. You're wrong for that one. I'm just saying. You're wrong, wrong, wrong for that one. You're wrong. She said you dirty. Yeah. If, if we in a gunfight, I will tell her, baby, come stand by Oh, me. man. And let me test the handle is. You just stand back there. You know, get your knife. Not to come after There you go. Get, get, get a knife. And you, you be there to pick up the slack. But if we got to use a gun, I'll do that. You don't even worry about it, okay? It's the same thing in our walk. I got to know my weapons. I got to know how to use them. I got to know when it's time to fast. You remember when we read that God told us that the disciples said, wait a minute, Lord, how come we've, we've, exercise so many people we've we freed so many people from demon possession how come we couldn't do it this man what what happened and he said because this particular because you know he's a bad boy he's not your average everyday kind of demon this is one of the big boys this one right here you can't just talk to him and tell him to leave 
Mm. And, you know, he, he the big boy. You got to fast. You got to pray. You got to get into some consecrated prayers. That's how you get this one to go. What does that mean to me as a Christian woman? That means that when I have a stronghold in my life that, can't, that seems like it just can't be broke, when that child or that loved one has a stronghold in their life that just seems like that demon has got them so tight and he mm -hmm. refuses to let them go, I got to know my weapons. I got to know, oh, okay. I, I didn't know who you was, but now that I do, I, I got to go pull out the big guns for you. Mm -hmm. Vaseline, gonna, take oh, off the earrings, all that. Mm -hmm. tail, put on the yep. shoes, put some yep. stuff on my face so I don't get too badly yeah. scratched up. Because yep. I didn't know who I was dealing with, but now that I do, I know my weapons. Amen. I can't fight, like Michelle said, if I don't know I'm in a fight. Yeah. 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 yeah.